I like this town. It's a good town. I like my house. I like my neighborhood. My mom and dad live over in Bayview, and um, my brother Patrick lives about five blocks down there. My brother Michael lives up on 68th Street, and my brother Matthew lives over on 54th. And that's really it. It's family. It's immaterial where I live because I'm traveling all the time. So this is a good spot for me for now, I think. If you got a pretty good idea of what you're looking for, then you got a pretty good idea of what you find. You don't have to go so very far these days to find yourself a made-up mind. I was seven years old, and I uh, went to summer camp, uh, a place called Camp Gray. And uh, there was a camp counselor that played the guitar, and you know, it's one of those things. I got home and asked my parents, you know, I'm seven years old and I want a guitar, and they got me one. And I used to walk down the block and take lessons and, um, up on North Avenue from a guy named Norb Kaminsky in the basement of a music shop. That went on for years. And then um, I used to play Pink Floyd tunes in high school, you know, play Wish You Were Here and all that stuff. And uh, a friend of my brother's comes down in the basement and I'm playing Wish You Were Here or something, you know, and he says, you know, you sing real good, you play real good, maybe you should start writing. The know-it-all washes away in the morning rain Those kids out in the street Raise up their hands, they keep moving their feet I think they know it all washes away to Boston in the early 90s and um, you know I was working temp jobs and they just sucked it was just awful uh, no fun and so I thought well okay I'll just go down and play in the subway and see what happens you know when I made it 70 or 80 bucks that day you know and change and selling CDs I think I had a CD by then and that was just a way more fun way to spend time and I got fans together and and I also put in, you know, the hundreds and hundreds, really the thousands and thousands of hours playing music for people. That's where I learned to really do it. I mean, you kind of have to, it seems the way the species is built, like you've got to do something for thousands of hours until some inner part of you just relaxes and goes, oh, this, this isn't that hard. So now on stage, I'm a pretty relaxed guy, and I think that helps. The audience kind of, it draws them in, because I don't need them to think a certain thing or whatever. I'm able to just sort of say, hey, well, here's what's going on. I hope you like it. And uh, people seem to respond, and I think that that's a direct result of all the time. I've been playing since I was a kid at the Cafe Carp, which is 56 miles, pretty much down that street, you know, uh, just west in a town of Fort, Fort Atkinson. And, and I've been biking for the past 10 years, pretty decent distances. And one day, you know, that the innocent thought of, well, if I could just carry a guitar on a bicycle, I could bike to the Cafe Carp and play a gig there. That innocent thought met a second innocent thought, which was, um, then I'd only be 35 miles from Madison. Uh, and I could maybe get a little mini tour together and that those two thoughts connected with each other and snowballed and then I was doing this tour that involved that and Green Lake and Oshkosh and and Sheboygan and it was wonderful but it was really something like I had to get in the kind of shape where I could do a 300 400 mile tour and then I just kept going you know once you do that once you get a taste of that you think wow there's really something to this like sunshine and uh, fresh air and exercise all summer long and getting in really good physical shape. And uh, the most recent bicycle tour I did went from here down my driveway to the ferry across Lake Michigan and then across the state of Michigan, across Ontario, across the state of New York, across the Green Mountains and to Boston. 
And when you do that yourself, uh, it's, it's, it sinks in, you know, you think, wow, I, I did just go a thousand miles, like, that hurt, <laughs> you know, but more than that, that was really something, you know. I'm going to do it till, uh, until my knees quit, you know, until I'm old and doddering, I want to make sure to do a week or two of touring by bicycle every year. I could say that there's environmental, you know, statements to be made, and I guess there are, I mean, if I can bike to work hundreds and hundreds of miles, then anybody can bike to work. But, you know, that would get old if it were just about the statement. It's just more about the experience. Uh, we were above the Hudson River, and there was this bank of fog, and there was frost everywhere. There was frost everywhere. There was a shadow on the ground, you know, in the shadows of all the houses. And uh, we were going to be descending towards the Hudson River, and we stopped, and we got these cider donuts. And when you're that hungry, you know, you've been using that, burning that many calories, and you're in that situation, that's, that's the best donut you can have. I, I'm going to remember that donut till I'm old. My first niece was born down in Chicago about nine years ago, and that day I, you know, I met her, but later in the day I got home here and went upstairs and wrote her a letter, and I've just kept that up. I just write them letters from the road, and so I just wanted them to, you know, get letters from an uncle saying, hey, you know, I'm in, I'm in uh, France, I'm in Alaska, uh, but also I try to mention their parents and their situation and what they're doing, so they have a little snapshot of themselves against the background of the world. And uh, then it occurred to me that I could just use that format to write about some ideas about time that I'd wanted to get at on my new record. And so, you know, I changed the names, but I used some anecdotes that had to do with my nieces and nephews and changed a few details in order to get that across. And I wrote music that went underneath them, and now I do the music. And it actually includes airplane noises, you know, because the, that's the imaginary sound of where I write most of these letters these days, is on airplanes. Yeah. 